Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, August 1st, 2023. Let's get into it. So, and Narofominsky districts of the Moscow region. Another drone was suppressed by electronic warfare and, having lost control, crashed on the territory of a non-residential complex in Moscow city. Three drones on this occasion dispatched towards Moscow. Two shot down by actual air defense, uh, blown out of the sky, if you like. One, the one that caused the damage to the building behind me, uh, was brought uh, down by electronic warfare means. So it's a secretive system that interferes with the navigation and the ability of these things to fly and brought it down onto this uh, commercial uh, center, damaging the building lightly. The same building had been damaged in the last 48 hours by another uh, wave of attacks. And it's important to note and uh, for the viewers to know that all of these attacks have been thwarted by uh, Russian air defenses. And those air defenses, the more attacks come, uh, the more they hone their skills and ability to plug the holes in that system. So that is a slight positive, if you like. But for the people on the ground who have to experience the, the, the loud bangs and booms of air defense systems and also the debris that comes down uh, in these uh, civilian areas, uh, it can be quite a harrowing experience. So we can actually listen to some of those experiences now. I was sitting at home talking to my friend on the phone who was actually recording a voice message for her. When I had a loud explosion that got caught on my voice message and I got really scared so I decided to look on the news what happened and it turned out that another drone hit the same building which it hit two days ago. And it looks also on the news that the Ministry of Defense confirmed that it was another Ukrainian drone strike. All right, so we got Ukrainian drones hitting Moscow. You know, I want to ask you uh, just a question. What would it be like if Mexican drones were hitting Washington, D.C.? How about Canadian drones hitting Washington, D.C.? What would you think of that? Oh, well, Russia and Ukraine are at war. Well, there's been no formal war declared. Uh, I imagine if uh, Ukraine wants to keep uh poking the bear and poking the bear, imagine, and, and then when they got total war, uh, Ukraine ain't, well, they're not surviving very well right now, but it's it'll get much worse. Uh, I do want to talk about Redacted just a little bit. Uh, they pointed out we've got that uh, neocon. Um, well, I want to just say I can't I, I can't think of any other word. Lunatic uh, Lindsey Graham uh, teaming up with Elizabeth Warren in the Uniparty to censor uh, Twitter and all other social media. And there's a bill now before the U.S. Congress that uh, they're going to go in and create the Ministry of Truth, <laughs> formally, in the United States. So uh, your, your rhino Republicans and your warmongering Democrats, they're getting together to uh, do the whole damn thing. What, what do you know? Um, so uh, I did want to get into some personal stuff. Uh, I was going to put up blinds, and I looked into it, and I guess there's a difference between shades and blinds. Check this out. I'm, I'm just going to have this going on while I'm making the video because I had them come in. Now, this was massively expensive and I would have never done this, but I tell you what, they do look nice. And uh, and I can I can hit one button and every window in the house opens up or hit one button and every window in the house closes down. Now, they told me these uh, lithium batteries that, uh, you know, China provides us are going to last for 10 years. And of course, you do have a cord that you're going to have to charge them up. And uh, I'm going to be buying extra cords, and they told me that I can just leave it plugged in, which means that I'll never have to charge it. So, uh, and I only use a couple of these, but check this out. I just have it going up behind me. There we go. Isn't that? Check that out. All right, so let's get into what's going on in the world. What's going on in the world? Oh, yeah. So the other thing on Redacted was that uh, China is providing directions to the um, their... Uh, well, if you want to call them uh, troops that are coming across our southern border, because the Democrats, the warmongering Democrats, the idiot Democrats want an open border. Why in the world do they want that? I have no idea. Have you seen the videos out of New York City now that uh, Texas and, um, well, of course, we can't say Arizona. They're still under Democrat control. Uh, and then in what I think was a questionable election, let's just say that Terry Lake is still continuing to fight that. Give her credit where credit is due. And uh, eight. 81 million votes by ass. 81 million votes by ass. Love that video. Love that video. But anyway, uh, and then so you got Texas and, uh, well, of course, Florida, you know, so we're all sending our illegal aliens to uh, New York City. And then 
So the Democrat there in charge, I can't remember his damn name. I, I try not to follow Democrats, but he came out and said, we need help, man. We can't handle all these because there's some hotel in, in New York City that uh, I can't remember the name of it. And they can't, <laughs> they can't even house all the illegal aliens no more. So the Democrats are starting to wake up that uh, maybe illegal immigration with Chinese uh, infiltrators coming across the southern border is a bad idea. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine that. All right, so let's get into what's going on. I guess the kind of the biggest concern, because all I, and, and this is where I try to branch out. My, my biggest concern was the, uh, obviously on these videos has been the Ukraine war, but now we've got another front opening up. And uh, of course, this is in Africa. Now, we just had the African summit. I did a video on that. You can go back and look at it. And I talked about what came out of that summit. It was truly uh, mind-blowing as far as the geopolitical uh implications of what came out of that conference up in Russia. So now what we've got going on, and I just want to read you some of these tweets. Uh, let's get into, uh, let's see. The son of the head of the National Security and Defense Council called on Ukrainians to surrender. Oh yeah, no, no, this, is, this isn't the one. I'm sorry. Let me get down. Um, all right, daggone it. I got to get into my tweets. Profile tweets. Okay, here we go. Yeah, a meeting was held between Russian Minister of Defense Sergei Sogu, Shogu and the Chief of the General Staff of the Algerian Army. The Russian Ministry of Defense is ready to help uh, the operational capabilities uh, operational capabilities of the Algerian Army, pointed out Shogu after the meeting. He added that Russia is interested in Algeria playing a leading role when it comes to security issues in the North African region. So that's uh, that's very interesting. And then we get into the next tweet. Uh, this was uh, huge because we've got African nations banded against, their, against NATO. Now, if you didn't know, uh, the French are ready uh, uh, to go in. They've asked, uh, I want to say Nicaragua. Uh, they want to go in and bomb Algier. Uh, we've got NATO forces massing in Africa. So it's kind of like World War II. Remember when uh, we had the African front? I think we're opening up the African front at this point, and that's what I'm seeing. So let's see, uh, so let's see what we got here. Nigeria's neighbor, neighboring countries, Mali and, well, hey, you know, these African nations. I mean, I tell you, I just, I'm not geopolitical in nature. I just, I'm just a grunt from the United States Marine Corps. But uh, it's called Burkina Fas, Faso. You ever heard of that? I never even heard of it. But they vow to go to war against the U.S.-backed African Union and ECOWAS, E-C-O-W-A-S. Uh, I guess that's a, 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 an African alliance that uh, hangs with NATO. So now you got Africa kind of splitting up on both sides of the war. you got the, the sides that's supporting Russia and China, and, and you've got the side that's supporting NATO. So uh, let's just keep reading. If they use force in an attempt to reinstate the ousted president of Nigeria. This comes as ECOWAS and the AU issued an ultimatum to the soldiers in Niger, demanding the reinstatement of the disposed leader or face force. Well, what's that force going to take on? Well, right now, what I'm seeing is about 2,000 NATO troops. Uh, uh, we'll see. Uh, of course, we're going to have the French uh, Air Force. Uh, I'm not sure if we have any planes there because the F-35s are in Syria right now. The U.S. is spread pretty thin. So for them to be able to go to Africa and fight Africa now, so let's see, we're fighting uh, Russia, we're fighting China, we're fighting Syria, we're fighting uh, North Korea, and now it looks like uh, we're going to be opening up a new fr African front. So the warmongering United States, uh, or the warmongering Democrats, it just seems like they just want to uh, fight the whole damn world. So we'll see where this goes. So they also impose sanctions supported by the United States. Secretary of State Blinken and the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. have spoken to the disposed leader and called for his immediate reinstatement. But now, Bakuna, Fosco, and Mali, both in West Africa, say they will join forces with the soldiers in Niger to fight the African Union and eco-war forces if they use force. So, uh, so look, and then, we're, so then we get down to President Joe Biden did not invite Bakuna, Fosco, and Mali to the second U.S.-African leader summit. By the way, they were in Russia. They were in Russia, so now you see where the alliance is going, where it's going. Uh, received by Biden, the viral... So, okay, let's get out of that one. Um, I got a new poll going. Uh, who blew up the Nord Stream pipeline? 
I mean, I know, I know who I believe, but so far, it's 33% uh, United States, 33% Russia, 33% Norway. Uh, you know where my belief is on that. I won't go into it because I don't want to tank the poll, the poll. Go read uh, Seymour Hersh uh, if you want to get my opinion on that. So uh, somebody asked me, it was, uh, by the way, I'm getting a lot of followers out of Africa now. And, uh, and, and they're asking me questions that I just don't have the answers to. And so one of them asked me, he says, why is NATO and the West so bent on their colonial power in Africa to suppress us in such a, a horrible manner? And, uh, and I, I thought about that and I thought about it. And, you know, and I, I said, well, what, how do you answer that question? And so I did. I put together an answer and I just wanted to read it to you. Is Africa rising after the recent Russian... Oh, this was a different reply. Let's read this one first. Is Africa rising after the recent, recent Russian summit? I see signs that they are ready to throw off the yoke of Western imperialism. The coup in Niger may just be the beginning. The African summit in Russia was another huge event. China and India are investing in Africa and have been for years. I see a nationalist... I see... Na, I'm seeing nationalist events... Wait, well national events, African nations waving Russian flags. <laughs> I mean, have you seen the videos? Oh, God. And then Niger will be a true test as people will likely die as the West does not go gently into that good night. NATO wages, uh, NATO versus Wagner in Africa. And that's, that's my feeling on that. Now, I'm sure the Africans may want to participate. Uh, this is another tweet. And by the way, I, was, I, was, I got ahead of myself getting into the replies. So we'll just keep going. This is Amdal Abdraman, a soldier involved in the coup in Nigeria, said that on national television that France had requested permission for Nigerian armed forces to launch airstrikes on their country. And then, of course, I replied to that. Oops, damn it. Looking at NATO, it's going to bring down their wrath on Nigeria. France asked Nigeria if they could, or Nigeria if they could launch airstrikes. There are also reports of up to 2,000 United States and French troops set to possibly evade. Invade Russia and Wagner status in Nigeria to repel NATO forces is unknown. Nigeria forces strength is unknown. I attend discussion groups about Nigeria and could garner no meaningful information. So they, you know, uh, Twitter has this thing called um, listening spaces. And I went into the group and I, I was asking what I thought would just be like, these people, they sound like super intelligent, man. I guess they're very well educated. You know, when I come in, I think they just want to punch that button and tell me to go to hell. <laughs> this guy's a complete idiot. We don't want to listen to him. But yeah, that's fine. You know, that's fine. And, uh, but I, I'm just asking military questions. That's all I know is the military. And so I was going, what are the, what are the military capabilities of Nigeria? Are they capable of uh, conducting joint military operations? Uh what is their Air Force capabilities? These are all things that I don't know. I'm not an African expert, but boy, if you know, leave a comment below. Maybe you can uh, um, give me something. So we're gonna get we're gonna get done with this. Uh, this was the one I put up. Poke the bear, poke the bear, poke the bear. What do the war and Democrats get? World War Three, and they love it. They love it. They want World War Three, baby. Democrats want World War Three. They want to freaking destroy the world. Of course, Lindsey Graham put him in that category. Uh, the French embassy in former African colony of Nigeria is under attack. Uh, and, and boy, I tell you, I don't know what happened with that. It kind of got squelched in the news. Uh, there were some videos up. I mean, there was all kinds of fires burning, people throwing stuff around. I thought the whole embassy was just going to burn to the ground. I couldn't give you anything on that. And then uh, let's get to one more tweet, and then I'm going to get into the replies. Oliver Stone, it, it was a mistake that I voted for Biden. And, and boy, this was interesting. If you ever watched Oliver Stone's documentaries, they are fantastic. You ought to check those out. But I'm going to read you what he had to say because I found this very enlightening. Uh, it was a mistake that I voted for Biden. He risked drawing the United States into a confrontation with Russia. American President Joe, Joseph Biden is following a suicidal course, or Democrats in general, that's not just Joe Biden, it's, it's his administration, and could stupidly dragged the United States of America into a confrontation with Russia, said the American uh, director Oliver Stone. Biden is an old Cold War warrior, and he really hates the old Soviet Union, which he is mixing again with the Russian Federation, which is not communist. Russia's an orthodox Christian nation. I would think that Christians in the United States would be lining up, but when I talk to a couple of my friends that are very religious, 
They like hate Russia. They're oh, Russia sucks. They're communists. No, no, they're a Christian nation, and that's what I. Th this is where the media has distorted everybody's opinion of Russia. But let's just keep going. Uh, he seems to be foolishly drawn in a confrontation with a power that will not budge. Those are Russians' borders. It, that is their world. Yes, it, Ukraine is Russia's world. Okay, Europe is Europe's world. We have no business being over there fighting this fight with billions upon billions of U.S. taxpayer dollars. I can't believe there aren't pitchforks and knives right now in Washington, D.C. All I can do is make these videos and tell you this is the stupidest war I've ever seen. And it's the, it's the most catastrophic war I've ever seen. I mean, 350,000 dead Ukrainians for what? Because the United States wanted war with Russia? All right, I'll just, let's just keep going. The famous director points out that voting for Biden in 2020 was a mistake. He also says that the coup d'etat in Kyiv was a very deep plan to penetrate the Russian Federation. So look, Oliver Stone even agrees with my opinion on all this. Um, all right, so um, yeah, then, then I get into the summit. So let's get to some of my replies real quick. Uh, I know this is getting a little long in the tooth. I try to keep it short so that I can put it up on Twitter. Um, let's see. Tulsi Gabbard. I replied to her and she was talking about uh, something. I don't remember. I said, uh, and I said, can you just call it what it is? The Biden administration are now dictators and have a, the full might and forces of the federal government, the Democrat fighter. Democrat Party and most of the military. Okay, and that's what I keep pointing out. You know, they got all the guns. The Democrat Party's got all the guns. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, this was uh, to my African friends, um, and I was trying to get philosophical for a minute, and uh, I thought this was a great reply uh, because they were asking me this. You know, I, did, I just talked about this earlier in the video. They were asking me why why did we do what we did. And I said, we became prosperous and turned into a turned a blind eye as to what activities our rich leaders, our elite evil presented to us, uh, were doing to the world. And so what I'm talking about there is that, you know, you've got the oligarchs, uh, the Bill Gates, uh, uh, you know, I don't know who else I include in that category, George Soros, uh, for sure. Um, and, and so they've been basically uh, controlling the puppet strings of the United States government and most Western nations. And I said, the West became corrupt to its core, and now the whole world is paying the price. We will all suffer, okay? And most people don't understand that the real fight, uh, if you're religious, like I am, uh, is between good and evil. It's not against the West and Russia. It's not against China. It's not against... We've got true evil on the planet. I never really, in my mind, thought that I would come to that conclusion other than watching uh, geopolitical events take place. And, uh, and so I said, I know I did not. I'm sure you have heard the phrase that evil will flourish when good people do nothing. Have hope. The world is waking up as the great suffering will come. Yes, we're, we are all going to suffer immensely in, in, in the coming days, uh, especially here in the United States. Um, and then, of course, uh, where is Wagner? Where is Wagner? Nobody can answer that. Um, oh, this was a funny. This was just me trying to be funny. Because uh, somebody said, why is, does anybody believe uh, Chris Christie can, can win the election? And then I responded, I said, oh, most definitely, man. I believe that Chris Christie can replace the Goodyear blimp and fly over the next Super Bowl. <laughs> so, oh, boy. Um, yeah, this was Tulsi's uh, tweet. And so this was the one that I responded to. It says, the death rattle of any democracy is when a sitting president uses the state security apparatus to go after political opponents and cover up lies and crimes committed by himself or his family. Um, Biden is doing that now. His actions make it clear he believes himself to be the enforcer of the rule of law, but, but the exception to it. Um, so let's get into a couple items I got laying around. I showed you the new blinds. I'll just put it down this time. Let's go down. Yeah, there we go. Oh, isn't that cool? All right, so uh, the new project that I've gotten into, um, I, I'm making new garden equipment. I'm trying to make some trellises for my tomatoes and my garden. Grow a garden, grow a garden, grow a garden. And check this out. So I, I got into the garage and I couldn't find all my damn screws and everything that I needed to put everything together. And I found this up on, um, on uh, Amazon. And uh, I like it. 
I like it because it's got a handle and you just grab it and I've got all my screws and everything in here. So I'm kind of, kind of organizing everything out of my garage into that. And see, if you want to look, this is kind of the way I used to have things organized was in stuff like this. But if there's no handle, and by the way, these, these little uh, hinges here just pop open. And I, I've dumped everything out of these multiple times trying to look in them. And I said, you know what? It's, sometimes you just got to look around and say, enough is enough, man. Just, just replace it. Um, and so a lot of the little screws, so you've got all the little screws down in here. I'm trying to put them in these pill bottles. Oh, sorry, boo. <laughs> By the way, doesn't he look great? Got him trimmed up today. Kind of looks like a, a rat now. He's got no fur. Um, and then, of course, this was another thing that I used to keep all my screws in. And I'll probably keep this. This is a spinner bait box. Uh, and maybe, uh, hopefully, I'll be doing some fishing here soon, someday. So that's it. Uh, let's get to the final ride. You can go on for a long time, go on for a long time, go on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar or tell that Democrat writer, tell that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Say hi, boo. Oh, sorry. Kind of flashed you, didn't I? I'm sorry about that.